In this lesson, we're going to take a look at a visual way of give, giving electron configuration. And we do it with a thing called electron spin, uh, and we use orbital notation to do this. So electrons have a quality called spin, and we represent that spin with an up arrow or a down arrow. Um, and we use orbital notation to show how the electrons are arranged in their orbitals and what spins they have. And the reason we do this is if we dig a little bit deeper into the periodic table, we know that there's some elements that don't fill their electrons in exactly the order that we think they do unless we understand that spin is involved and there's repulsion between things and we're not going to get too carried away with this, but it is a nice handy visual representation. So remember, the first energy level, which is energy level 1, has an s orbital and that s orbital can hold two electrons. So what we do is we draw that one orbital as a dash and we can put an electron in it with a positive spin and an electron in it with a negative spin. And that's the 1s energy level, it's the 1s orbital, everything in one is now full. So then we go to the second energy level which is 2s and I'll actually want to move that down a little bit so I have room to write. So our 2s is down here and the 2s also has, it's an s orbital so it's got two spots and then we go to the 2p but remember there are three 2p orbitals so I have a dash, a dash, a dash and when these fill in we get one electron and then no electron goes in here until this electron is placed because electrons don't like each other they're not going to go into the same orbital unless they have to unless there's no other choice so we don't start filling in the second electron until all the orbitals are full so then we've got our 2p and then we go to a 3s the 3s fills up and again up and down and then the three P's, and they fill similarly to the to the uh, two P's. You're going to have one in each before any of them pair up, and then they pair. And then we go to the four S, and again up and down spin. And then we go to the three D. Remember, so one, two, three, four, five, because there are five D orbitals. So three D, three D, three D, three D. 3d. Well, the d orbitals do a little bit funny things. Um, you're going to get the same thing: electron, 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 and then they start filling in the other way: electron, 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 electron. But what's weird is when this electron fills in, you'll notice how everything in the D's is symmetric except for this one. Well, if this electron would jump over and fill that spot, then it would be symmetric. And it turns out that symmetry actually makes it a little bit more stable, less energetic. So that actually happens. So this electron actually moves over here and it fills in here. I'm not going to test you on that, but copper has a different electron configuration than you'd expect because it fills that d orbital and leaves one out of the s orbital. But then that s fills in and then the next thing you have is the p's, right? And we have 4p and there's three 4p's. So 4p, 4p, 4p. And again, it follows the same rule like that. Okay, So the electrons don't pair until uh, there's no other option. All right, so that is orbital notation. So if I wanted the orbital notation for an element, what I actually want you to do is I want you to show me the spins of all the electrons and all their orbits and all their energy levels. It's not complicated, it's just write that stuff out. And you can write it like this, you could put it all in a string, just make sure you go in the proper energy levels, right? 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, you guys know the energy levels. All right, so that's orbital notation, not a huge deal. The next thing is the octet rule, okay? Atoms are stable when the S and P orbitals are full. Whoops, those should be lowercase, S and P orbitals are full. When those are full, atoms are stable. If they're not full, then they're going to form bonds in order to become stable. And this is at a given energy level. So on the first energy level, that's just two. On everything else, it's eight, right? Eight electrons for everything but the first energy level. The first energy level only has the s orbital and it only holds two electrons so 1s2 is completely full it's completely stable then we have 2s2 and 2p6 that gets us six and two eight total electrons in the second energy level that's stable that's nice and then we go 3s2 3p6 that's eight that's stable that's nice and it's actually a noble gas then we go 4s2 
which is the fourth energy level, but remember after 4s is 3d, so we still have only two in the fourth energy level, and then we go 5p again. So the s and p's are the ones that determine the valence electrons, and since the s and p's hold eight total electrons, we have the octet rule, which says atoms are stable when they have eight valence electrons. Because valence electrons are, are available to participate in bonds, we care about them, and we are very, very interested in just knowing about electrons, uh, valence electrons sometimes. Do we have to actually come up with the electron configuration for any atom to figure out how many valence electrons it has? Well, the answer to that is no. The periodic table gives us a nice cheating shortcut that we we can use. And then we can use electron dot diagrams to show the valence electrons for any given atom. Now there are a couple rules when drawing electron dot diagrams. First, A group column number gives total number. A group column number equals valence electrons. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at the periodic table. The A groups are the S and P blocks. So remember this is the S block over here. The P block is over here. Collectively we call them the A group. And we just number them 1 through 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If it's in column 1, it's got one valence electron. If it's in column 2, it has two valence electrons. Skip the 10 in the middle. Three valence electrons, four valence electrons, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons, except for, remember, helium only has two. So we look at the periodic table, and we know how many valence electrons it has. If it's in the transition metals, then you actually kind of have to think about it and maybe do an electron configuration to see how many energy, how many electrons are in the energy level um, on the outside. And some of these can actually do funny things where they promote electrons in different energy levels. We're not going to get too much into that, at least not yet. All right, so the A group is actually referring to the S and P groups. The column number tells me the valence electrons. The next thing we have to remember is you can have up to eight electrons because there's up to eight valence electrons, but no side gets all eight. Okay, so what we do is we put the symbol for an element in a box without drawing the box. So like aluminum, if I want to draw its electron dot diagram, I'm going to think about putting aluminum in the box, just like it is on the periodic table, and then surrounding that box by how many valence electrons it has. Well, I find aluminum on the periodic table. It's right here, and I see it's got three valence electrons, so I want to know what does its electron dot diagram look like. Well, its electron dot diagram is going to have three dots around it. Those three dots can go on any side as long as they're all on separate sides, and that's because no side gets a pair until, that's an I, until all sides have one. Okay. So aluminum, well it's only got three, so the actual valence electron dot diagram for aluminum is AL, and then there's three electrons around it. And it does not matter what three sides you use. You can use the left, right, and top, you can use, you can use the top, right, and bottom, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got three electrons and every electron's on a different side, you're good to go. If we look at oxygen, oxygen is a group six element, 6A, which means it's got one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. You'll notice there's a pair on the top, a pair on the right, but the left and bottom, they're unpaired. You could also have drawn this completely the other way. It wouldn't matter at all. This is exactly the same thing. It's still got two pairs of electrons and two unpaired electrons. Why do I care about that? Well, it turns out it's easy to think of electrons that are unpaired as willing to form bonds, right? There's an open spot here that we're not quite filling in order to get to eight. There's an open spot there. Okay. So those unpaired electrons are later going to be important because we're going to use them to form bonds. So to draw an electron dot diagram, we just draw the valence electrons, which are the electrons in the highest occupied S and P orbitals on the highest occupied energy level. Remember, eight's the magic number because the S and P's only give us eight valence electrons.